When it comes to societal and cultural matters, the detail is what counts. Mm -hmm. So if you skip what this woman said, you missed the point. So you have to really he listen to the people and listen to the issue, and then you decide where the issues are as opposed to generalize with abstract. The second point is governance, like many other uh, institutional arrangements, those who are running it are getting ideas from somewhere. So let me just go to Freud. Mm. Uh, not that I like him <laughs> or like his <laughs> But um, this is a, the most famous psychoanalyst in the world, and he had options. He, um, I'm sure he had on his bookshelf uh, Egyptian mythology, but he chose Greek mythology. And so by going to Oedipus and so on, we have uh, sons who want to sleep with their mothers and we want wanting to kill his father. And I think it's not a very good model for family. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, he became very famous and many people were very excited about that. That's where it's at. We go to this where all it's because uh, subliminally, I really want to sleep with my father. And, and it became that, and he, of course he was treating all these upper, uh, upper class, or upper middle class Austrian women uh, and, and diagnosing them with hysteria and so on. It was all within that framework. He could have gone to the model of Isis and Osiris. I think he, he, he had access to that information and he would have had a very different model of family where Isis is trying to save Osiris and so that they protect Horus and things like that. So what I'm saying is you get your ideas from somewhere. So I will present some ideas. Okay. Well, he was also looking at why people were sick, not why they're healthy. Um, he made them sick because he decided they are sick. Well, there were sick people yeah. before he was <laughs> Okay. Uh, some of this um, was already discussed um, that if uh, governance is not responsive, responsive to ordinary folk, then there is discontent. Um, the, the, there is uh, globalization, information technology, awareness, participation. We talked about all of that. I'd just like to point out that, again, I, I mentioned it yesterday, that technology didn't start itself. It's the, um, the creative capacity of humans that started technology to use it. And ever since uh, the human species, who are now are becoming, what's the word he used? Uh, the human species, he said they are, when, whatever, the presentation in the morning, I didn't like that part. The human uh, species started walking bipedally, they moved out. They kept moving. And they kept moving to connect, to communicate, to find different food resources, to find better food resources, to find better climate. And when Homo sapiens developed, they moved in the territory of the Neanderthals. I know this is too specific, but this is our field. And when they went to the Neanderthals, they shared with them and they mated with them. And that's why you have the 4%. And, um, they, but they also, the Neanderthals were not really evolution-wise equipped to continue. Uh, so they, uh, they were replaced by Homo sapiens, and there we are. So what I'm saying is movements, immigration has a very long history for almost the same purposes, but less, less intensity and less possibilities because they don't have an airplane. But they walked out of a continent to another continent, and they continue to do that. Um, in terms of the solutions to governance, we have to reach the marginalized, not just the people, when we say people and society, the marginalized and local uh, communities who are already trying to help themselves. So I'll give one example here. I mentioned it yesterday, the brave women of Bosnia. That name was given to the river that these women are trying to save. 
Uh, these are ordinary women who, uh, as women, they are closer to the needs of their families, they are closer to uh, their children, um, the uh, quality of life in their communities, and they feel very threatened by all this hydropower that's going on. And we know that the big projects are done and funded by uh, big global institutions like the World Bank, but the threat seems to come from the nation state itself in this case. That is, we have to protect the people from their government because um, many of these hydropower projects um, are small scale ones that are hurting these women. They are illegal, most of them, and they are done without any environmental impact assessment required, which uh, supposedly uh, World Bank and European banks and so on do assessment, whether it's good assessment or bad assessment. But these are really just corrupt projects. And what's happening, it's encroaching on the rivers. And the rivers are the only livelihoods they have. They are very pristine, natural rivers. They grow their own food. And this is the food from the apple tree that will go to the children and maintain that quality of life. And they go and drink that water directly because it's just beautiful, pristine water. Um, do we have a role, maybe I, we ask this and we discuss it in the end, do we have a role to reach those people? The state is already being served by, um, the, the, all the states in the Balkans are being served by the international community. What do we do about cases like this? They are publicized, we know about them. It's Patagonia, I think, that is now um, showing us these pictures about this Bosnian group. Do we care about uh, small groups who want quality of life, who want to save their families, and they don't want to join the large world and uh, cyber uh, uh, world and so on? The second point is it has to do with our elections today. I guess the, uh, by the end of the day, this would be obsolete. We know that Native Americans here, they are referred to as tribal people. Um, they face inequality, exploitation, they are more represented in poverty and homelessness than any other group. Um, they have a particular space orientation that was well studied by anthropologists. Uh, they look at the world and they say, if one of the um, Native Americans of any of the groups asks him, where do you live? They say, there, by the tree, by the river, just behind that. Um, something natural where uh, the deer are and so on. Okay, now uh, they are put on reservations and they were not given uh, streets numbers or house numbers, they were not assigned. Um, they use the same markers among themselves, but they, for mail they have to go to a, a post office box. Now when election came, they were told that the only way they can participate in the larger governors is through elections. That is, you have to vote. If you want your rights covered, you have to vote. But they're not making it easy for them to vote. Um, so they are not providing them with street address, and if they go and to fill the form, what's your street address? Well, we were not assigned street addresses. Well, you can't vote then. So in order to be a citizen, you first drop your identity, which is, I want to go there by the tree, by the deer, by the river, and you adopt a new one, I live on Elk Street, number two, uh, but that's fine. They're not even giving them that, so they have to, uh, they can't even have a national identity by American standards, uh, because and it's the only way out. So I leave it to you. What do we do about cases like this? Um, there is, uh, I think I may, I may have missed one. Um, I was going to fill the uh, model that I showed yesterday about um, the goddess Matt, um, fill it with how, uh, if you see who um, uh, this god married that god and the moon and the sun and the earth, life and the afterworld, 
and they're all modeled uh, on families. That is, they marry and they have a son who is a moon or a sun. And the, the moon also has the same symbols, the three symbols of uh, governance, uh, law, uh, justice, uh, and morality, and so on. They all maintain that symbol, but they marry each other and then have a child. Uh, so you see what what the worldview that is given to the people in ancient Egypt was a, um, a coherence of the natural world. So many of them, the, the moon is um, some bird, I don't remember now, um, the sun, it's all animals, and, um, and the family. So society is integrated in that same model because they marry and have a child and they are in, connected to the animal world and the universe and so on. And I think that is one worldview that allows the people, if it's true that you always follow a leader, uh, the, instead of a leader or instead of a constitution, what they got is a worldview that uh, allows a coherent interconnection between the whole universe. They are put in a universe uh, coherently with the rest of it. Um, here is, uh, I talked about that yesterday, but I'm providing a, a, a uh, slightly different way of presenting that in a radial way, the bilateral partnership. So it's instead of the vertical and the horizontal, I see those concentric circles where there's the global world on the outside and then the nation state, but the nation state is radiating to the whole world. That's now the Egyptian model. Uh, the modern Egyptian model, radiating to the whole world with his bilateral partnership, and I'm giving you an, my favorite example. Is that showing us? Turn around. Turn around. What do I do? There you go. <laughs> Just keep pressing the buttons. You keep going now forward. you're going back now. There you go. There you go. Um, I see the whole thing. You don't. <laughs> okay. So that's Mr. Sisi and Mr. Putin. But every day he's with somebody else, and some of these are all enemies to each other, and I put Putin just to irritate those who uh, don't like Russia. Um, so again, it's, uh, the, the, and the local communities are involved in this, and I, and I mentioned how there are initiatives and uh, projects social projects and new ministries at the government level that uh, create those initiatives and reach the people. Of course, this is six years old. So in 20 years, we'll find out the consequences intended or not intended aspirations have consequences, but at least these are the aspirations and they take in consideration um, um, these levels and they provide us with an alternative to the isolationism, uh, unilateralism, and keeps the nation state within the global world and goes away from coalitions uh, building partnerships instead. Um, so, what I want to suggest, and then we'll open to discussion, is that um, I think it is dominant in discussions uh, in the West to use Western models. They go to Greek for models. They go to, uh, now we have a wonderful Belgian model of trying to correct the situation of not being able to reach, and now they're trying to reach the people, but, this, but the system was already there. Now we have a six-year-old experimentation. I think a group like that must look at it equally as they look at the Belgian model. That is, this is an experimentation of a country that's beginning to build 
building on what already exists and not defining it, just including it and doing things to connect these levels. So to look at it as a legitimate experimental system and watch it, rather than dismiss it as this is a developing country or third world country or bongo bongo or whatever terms are used. Essentially, um, this is a legitimate experiment and done with good intent. I'm, I'm not, I was never comfortable with the systems in Egypt before that. Now I'm beginning to watch carefully to see if it's going to work. <laughs>